Today, we're gonna to be jumping into a long awaited feature for Zoho Analytics, and that is the ability to create Gantt charts. So a Gantt chart is essentially a way to visualize generally task data over time, looking at start and due dates, so that you can kind of see how you're looking in the long run on a particular set of tasks or maybe a particular project. So let's jump right on in. So here we are inside of the article. This was announced in the Zoho Analytics September 2025 updates. We'll have a link to this down below. There are a bunch of other updates as a part of this. We're not going to worry about those for now. Looking here, this is the big one, right? We've got the ability to create a Gantt chart. Here we can see in the image, right? Essentially, each one of these horizontal bars, like for client review, would essentially be like your task, where the beginning of the bar is the start date and the end of the bar is the expected due date. So if we click in and actually look at the more detailed breakdown, we can see main ways you would use this project planning, performance analysis, and resource allocation. One of the really nice things about a Gantt chart, especially if you're making one that includes many projects, is the ability to see for like a particular team or a particular skill set, how busy are you expecting to be on some future date, right? So if you had a client come in and they're like, hey, when can you get started? A Gantt chart is a good way to answer that question accurately. If we take a look at the instructions here real quick, essentially we're gonna need some type of dimensional column. Dimensional column normally being like a name, a status, right? Something that is uh, qualitative. We're gonna use task name. And then in our y-axis here, we're going to need a start date and an end date. We're going to use a due date instead of end date. And that will allow us to create the Gantt chart. One thing we'll note, we need to use minimum date and maximum date for each of these. And I'll show you exactly how to do that. It's pretty simple, but you could get caught up there. There are a couple others here. You can add things into the size and text so that when you hover over, you're able to see exactly what's going on and get a little bit more contextual information. So with that, we're about to jump right on into the demo where I actually show this. Before I do, I wanna ask if you find the video useful so far, be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave me a comment with any questions, feedback, and video requests and head on over to Zanata.com and click on book a meeting if you'd like some help setting up things like this in your Zoho account. Jumping into the actual demo account here, I've got a project, I'm not creative, so I've named it example project. I launched this thing from a template, right? So we can see that I have my task kind of cascading with various start dates and due dates. Inside of Zoho Projects itself, you can look at a Gantt chart here. You know, as a point of reference, when we pull this inside of Zoho Analytics, should look similar, <laughs> right, if, we, if we've done it correctly. And we can see here that really it's just this ability to see the start and the end dates for each of these tasks. In this particular project template, I do have some dependency set up so that if I were to move start and end dates around for tasks, they're going to move dynamically. You know, and then we can see there's a bit of a gap. We do some more work, another gap, we continue. Let's actually go ahead and see how this would look inside of Zoho Analytics. What we can see is that I've created here an example Gantt chart. In this case, it's kind of stretched out over a long period of time. So we'd want to quickly look at our, you know, tasks here and make sure to see, yeah, that looks reasonable, right? This is a pretty long project. We're going to be working on this all the way through May of 2026. So we can see how exactly did I set this up? Well, here's the finished product. Let's imagine that we wanted to start from scratch, right? I'm going to make a new chart view report. I'm gonna base this off of tasks. Now here, you're gonna to wanna to choose the appropriate module for what you're looking to visualize. You could imagine doing one of these based on milestones. You could think about doing one on like a CRM, right? You might have tasks there with like a creation date and a due date, and maybe there's a certain you know workflow that you're looking to see there. In my case, I'm gonna use the project's tasks. I'm gonna grab task name here from the left and bring that in. Just gonna use the value of the task name. And then I'm going to bring in my start date and my due date. And let's imagine that I set these to full date, right? Because I want to see the exact day that we start. Well, this doesn't look quite right. And what we'll see is that I actually can't switch this over to the Gantt chart view. This is where reading the documentation is really, really important. This is where we need that minimum date and maximum date to allow this to work. So what that means is we're basically gonna come into this little dropdown inside of full date. We're gonna bump start date over to the minimum and we're gonna do due date as our maximum. 
Now I'll click generate, still gonna look funky, right? Because we've not switched it over to our Gantt chart view yet. But once I do, now we start to see it actually will make a Gantt chart. Now, initially what you'll see here is, man, this looks bad, uh, I agree. So how are we gonna fix that? Well, what I know is that inside of my Zoho Projects instance, I'm launching this from a template, right? And so because it's launched from a template, I probably have many tasks with the same name in here, right? That are gonna be messing with my data, right? Because it's basically taken the minimum start date for any task that has this name and the maximum due date for any task that has this name. And so because I've been launching projects like this over a long period of time, unsurprisingly, these task minimums and maximums are gonna get quite wide. So what I'd like to do here is either put in some type of hard-coded filter or a user filter with some kind of default, right? Either of these are totally fine. I'm gonna bring it in as a user filter because generally people are gonna wanna toggle around with these. And what I've done here is I've just gone into my left-hand bar. I've grabbed project name. So basically filter on the name of the project related to the task. Now what I'm also gonna do is come in and specify a default value just really for the purposes of our example here. So I might come in and say, hey, my default value is gonna be example project, just so that as we're working with this, it looks a little bit more reasonable. Now I'm gonna click save. We're gonna call this example Gantt chart V2. I always forget when I'm typing this, is it two N's or two T's? But it is it is two T's at the end. I'm actually named after a guy whose last name was Gantt, who came up with this method. Now here we can see now that we're starting to have our tasks actually show up, right? With a start date of the 9th, a due date of the 11th. So let's jump over to our example project again and just make sure, yep, we got from the 9th to the 11th. So we are looking good. What you can also do is come in and bring in things like completion percentage. So I'm gonna do the sum here and click generate. What you'll have is that as it moves through the various statuses, the bar kind of fills up. So if we look at our example here, you can see how this code review bar is like 50% filled up with dark blue, right? That's because they've added that completion percentage to help size the bar as it's going across. We can also add things like status into tooltip. I do recommend using tooltip when you can, just because actually throwing a little error there, but it allows you to essentially have some click through information into that particular task. One thing you're also gonna wanna do, like when you set up the Gantt chart by default, it's gonna sort it based on the name of the task, right, alphabetically. And so this looks kinda like nonsense, right? But if we come in and sort it by Y value and then by start date ascending, now it looks like a proper Gantt chart, right? Where it's kinda moving from left to right, moving down the task list with the dates moving uh, rightward as we go. So now we're looking a whole lot better. Now, again, there's always more you can do here. You could add additional filters based on, you know, start and completion. You could add filters around task status, right? And maybe say like, make this a multi-select and exclude things that are closed potentially, right? So I could say, hey, don't worry about the, the closed tasks, right? I just wanna see things that are open. In my case, everything is open. So that, that wouldn't actually make any real changes. Um, and then of course, as you're working with these, this little filters tab here is uh, looking at things that the user cannot filter on the fly. So for example, if I just wanted to look at a certain type of project, I could come in here and maybe filter on like a category field. Um, I could filter on like, hey, only show ones where the name contains example, right? So maybe you have like a naming convention for your projects and you wanna look at a certain type. You can always add these filters and they will apply no matter who's looking at it, right? And they won't have the ability to unselect this filter, right? So that's, that's kind of the big difference between a user and a standard filter. But at the end of the day, I mean, some other things that you can think about as you're going through here, you know, you've got different styles of Gantt charts that you can apply either to a bar or a bullet. These are really just minor visual differences, right? Where you can see like, hey, you know, it's either gonna fill it all the way up or it's gonna keep that uh, little bit of border space around it. You can change your colors, right? You can set up any default dates. So there are a few other steps, but overall a relatively simple, quick and easy way to make that Gantt chart. Again, if you're in Zoho projects, like realistically for me, 
if I just wanted to see the Gantt chart of one project uh, without any other data kind of wrapping it around, I'd very likely just come into this view and go to Gantt chart and look at it here, right? Because if I wanted to make any changes, I could just click and drag, everything moves, right? And I'm good to go. You'll, you'll see it bumped past the, the weekend here because I moved it back. So a lot of the times, if I were just working on one particular project, I'm going to keep coming into Zoho projects to do that. But what you could imagine with something like the Gantt chart in analytics is maybe you've got a dashboard in place already, right? And that dashboard, this is just one of their example ones, might be bugged out a little. There we go. So say you had some type of dashboard like this, and you wanted to have it filterable by project and be able to see kind of this top-down information about what's going on with that particular project, right? This is where I really imagine using my Gantt chart reports, not just as a report, really, but instead as a component of a larger dashboard, right? So here I could come in, bring in one of my reports. I'll go ahead and search for Gantt so that I don't have to scroll in front of you and embarrass myself. And then here I could go ahead and just click and drag that in to show those tasks inside of a particular dashboard view without having to, again, you know, go over to projects, see the Gantt chart there, jump back over into analytics, see the full dashboard here, right? You start to get this idea that it's going to look a little funky or get a little bit like, you know, five tabs open that I'm jumping between. So main use case would really be if you're looking to include it on a dashboard. Do keep in mind your timeline filter is still going to apply here. So like because this is on the last 12 months, you're only going to see things from September or backwards, right? So I might need to go to like this year, for example, and now my Gantt chart will start to pop in a bit more accurately. Again, this one actually stretched all the way in the next year. Um, so you might, again, just need to uh, dial in all of your date filters accordingly or potentially just exclude the Gantt chart from that date filter altogether, right? By coming in, going into the options on this report, and then saying, hey, within my dashboard filters, get rid of some of these, or maybe like don't apply my timeline filter at all so that I can just always see the full thing, no matter what type of timeline I want for the rest of my data on this dashboard. With that, I know there's been a long awaited feature, so I wanted to get a video out just showing exactly how it works and kind of how I would imagine using it, again, with the focus on inclusion on some type of dashboard. Really do hope that you found the video useful. Be sure to leave any questions or feedback down below. Let me know what other types of reports you'd love to be able to make inside of Zoho Analytics. I've got a few on my list and I'd love to see if yours are the same. While you're down there, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos like this. This one with that we'll wrap up so as always my name is Tyler Colt and I will see you next time